Though you aren't of the Legion, you've aided us more than once. We acquire many items on our raids, some useless to us, some forbidden. I've provided you the location of a drop box where you can obtain these items. The box will be replenished every few days. Please be aware that we'll assume any items left in the box will be unwanted and be removed and destroyed. Stay an ally of the Legion and we will share our loot with you. If you start working against us or become an enemy, our deal ends. True to Kaiser. My message to you has been delivered and I've got other places to be. This crowd's walking to help.
Look, friend, don't get near me. You're too well respected for my business. Hey, baby. There's more of this waiting for you inside. Looking to lose a few caps, huh? Just the place. amazing. You are just a hero. I am serious. That's three down, two to go. You bet. Come. Fuck off, ass breath. You've already heard my spiel. You really gotta go see Adrian. Beg your pardon, but could I trouble you to turn over your weapons? My deepest... Those cons got the hint. We've shown everyone that these are our new territories. You watch yourself around, Mr. Gunderson. Those masks make me nervous. Is there something wrong with their faces? What can I get you? What can I get you? Farewell. They say those robots on the strip are running around with different faces or something. Don't ask, because I don't know. Beg your pardon, stranger, but I'm looking for someone. You ain't seen a young man with dark brown hair and a white hat on lately, have you? <sighs> ain't nobody got one darn piece of news about my boy. Not one lousy speck of information. Ain't got one Brahmin unaccounted for across a dozen ranches. But I'm here for an hour and my own son just up and disappears on me. Yep, got a whole mess of Brahmins to my name. Bighorners, too. Used to just have the one ranch, but land was easy to grab before the soldiers moved in. Before I knew it, I was running one of the biggest ranching operations east of California. Now everywhere I go, folks I never even met shake my hand and call me Mr. Gunderson. Don't quite know what to make of that. Made me a special arrangement with the hotel. They want to do business with me, they got to play by my rules. A lot of people out there resent success. Might want to take a swipe at me. This makes them think twice. If I'd have been thinking, though, I'd have had him watching my boy instead. Then none of this would have happened. My boy, Ted. He was right here. I didn't leave him but a minute. I told him to stay put while I talked some things over with the White Glove folks. He was never one to stay tied down to a spot, though. Gets that from his mother. Got most of my staff out looking for him now. I'd be out myself, but I keep hoping he'll show up back here. Of course, if he does that, I'll whoop him till his skinny hide turns to leather for putting me through this. But that don't mean I wouldn't be grateful. That's between me and the White Glove Society. But let's just say they control the food supply around here, and I got lots of food to give. But that ain't as welcome as you might think. That's what they call themselves, the folk that run this place. They're the ones dressed all fancy with their bow ties and shiny dresses. Some of them got masks, too. Real hard to trust folks like that. A couple of them show their faces, and that's who I do my business with. I don't talk to none of the other ones. I'd be more than happy to have you. 
Heck, I'll hire anybody with a pair of legs and at least one good eye at this point. There'd be a lot of money in it for you if you can get him back to me safe. And if he ain't, you can bet I'll pay for the names of the sons of bitches responsible. I'll be here. What can I do for you, boss? Hey. Howdy. Good seeing you again. I hear you. Sure, kid. And I still hump like a buck in spring. That Gunderson's a liar and born of a viper, I swear. Oh, be damned. You mean the young Gunderson? That's a shaved tail if I ever saw one. He's got less sense than a Brahmin at a crossroads. I'd not be one to complain if he got lost for good, kid. If it makes Hex suffer, then I'm all for it. So Ted's nowhere to be found, and Hex quite unprotected while looking for him, huh? Hell, it sounds like the perfect time to get even. Heck won't know what hit him. What do you say? A ransom? I doubt that snake's got enough soul to care that much for his own young'un. Besides, what's to stop him after his son's return? No, Heck only knows greed and pain, kid. It's high time he got paid back in kind. His life or his son's. Either way, I win. I hear you. What's on your mind? <laughs> you leave me drier than tumbleweed, kid. But I reckon anything I can do to get back at Heck is well worth the expense. Ethel's going to be madder than a wet hen. But you reap what you sow, kid. And Hex earned every ounce of misery he gets. So we have a deal? All right, kid. Be good. I beg your pardon, but could I... That fiend leader shouldn't have messed with our great army. What can I get you? Life at the top is immensely satisfying. How may I be of service, sir? No, not from the likes of you, I'm afraid. I don't think you'd have the stomach for it. Better look elsewhere. My, such a popular question. I suppose it is only natural to see us and wonder what it is that makes us special. 
The White Glove Society has only just made itself known to the public, of course, but our pedigree was established over generations. Were we always so refined? <laughs> I'd be lying if I said yes. But I've always felt we were destined for a place atop modern society. And now, here we are. Not everyone can wear the finest clothes and eat the finest foods, obviously. That's just the reality we live in. But surely we can agree that the most tasteful, sophisticated people are the most deserving. And that's what the White Glove Society is all about. Indeed. Should have bet we'd kill the fiend's leader. Good day. Those are all members of the White Glove Society. Our founder Marjorie gave us all a dress code. There's only one rule to it. In her words, we must dress in such a way that no one can be said to have dressed better than us. As for the masks, I'm not allowed to tell you. We're sworn to secrecy. Actually, that's not true. That's just what we're supposed to say. I think Marjorie likes them for the mystery they create and the way they make it clear that we're different from everyone else. But you didn't hear that from me. Mm, must have forgotten to put it on. How embarrassing. Oh, well, it's a big hotel. You should talk to Marjorie. She's in charge and she can probably help you find anyone you might need. She usually works at the front of the gourmand. She likes to see how people respond to it. You can get to the gourmand from the lobby here. It's a big set of double doors on the first floor of the eastern side. Can't miss it. Farewell. Welcome to the Ultralux. I do hope it exceeds your every expectation. I do, but one can hardly call it work. I think of myself as a caretaker rather than a common laborer. I suppose it is a labor of love if it can be called labor at all. We at the White Glove Society are all responsible for maintaining the beauty and class of the Ultralux. And as its founder, I suppose it falls to me to decide how we go about it. What else? Mr. Gunderson and I have been discussing his livestock. It's put us in a rather delicate position, you see, his coming here. Not that we aren't grateful for his generous offer. But our executive chef, Philippe, has transformed ramen steak into a delicacy. He really is a genius. Everyone wants it. But a delicacy is just that, delicate. If everyone can get it, it ceases to be a delicacy. It becomes a perfectly ordinary staple. And if the gourmand serves staples, it would no longer draw the caliber of people it deserves. It would be a diner or a family restaurant. So as much as we'd all love for there to be enough steak for everyone, I'm afraid there are more important things to consider. This again? I thought this was all settled. I answered every one of that investigator's questions to his satisfaction and gave all the help I could. I know our reputation hasn't always been spotless, but that's all in the past now. How some people can't get over it is beyond me. For the last time, the White Glove Society has never and will never consume human flesh for any reason. It's written in the Charter. There was an investigator who came through here last week. He'd been hired by a young man whose bride-to-be went missing during their stay here. Well, you can already guess what probably happened, can't you? It seems perfectly likely that she got cold feet and ran off. And that young groom just didn't have a clue, the poor dear. Why, yes, I think so, if he hasn't checked out yet, that is. I had our maitre d' Mortimer offer him a complimentary room for as long as it took for him to be satisfied. You see, the White Glove Society remains the very picture of courtesy. 
even in the face of such impolite accusations. We have nothing to hide here. Now, didn't I already tell you that we don't do that sort of thing? We do not engage in cannibalism here under any circumstances, though we haven't always been the white glove society. There was another time, a dark time, when we went by a different name. But that's all changed now. We've evolved past such base impulses since settling into our new home. I've seen to it that those days are behind us. A man? Well, then this... Well, this can't be. Two disappearances in my hotel? What will people say? I'm going to have a word with my staff about security on the premises. Whether these people are found or not, our guests simply must feel safe in their own rooms. Ta-ta! Hey. I'm sorry. I prefer to converse with interest. You look positively famished. We simply can't have that. You won't find better. Thanks. Farewell. What can I get you? I'd wait. I waited months to get in here, but the place isn't nearly full. You think the waiting list is just for hype? Marjorie, it's only one. How may I be of service, sir? Ah, yes. I've heard that one too. Jealous people say such nasty things. I feel sorry for them. I can assure you that the only thing the White Glove Society is guilty of is preparing the tastiest cuisine you'll ever sample. That is, of course, if you can afford it. Private investigator. Ah, yes, I remember the gentleman. This was about the missing bride. Such an awful thing. I do hope he finds her whereabouts. If I might pry, have you found something that will help his investigation? Of course, of course. Now, ordinarily, we don't give out guest information, but I think given the circumstances, he'll want to speak with you. Let's see. He hasn't checked out yet. If you head back to the hotel rooms, his will be one floor directly above you after you exit the lobby. I hope we can put this whole matter to rest at last. If you head back to the hotel rooms, his will be one floor directly above you after you exit the lobby. Indeed. I'd wager that the army's sending elite units our way. Right. Okay, Bob.
Right behind. How may I be of service, sir? Welcome to the Ultralux. I do. There were and that young groom. Have you been in the steam room yet? It's just off to the side there. You can feel your aches just melt away. It smells so good in here. Like the air is cleaner than it is outside. I'm so relaxed. Too bad I can't stay longer. But who can at these prices? I'm so relaxed. Too bad I can't stay longer. But who can at these prices?
Who are you? You don't know? Oh, good. That's good. So they didn't send you after me. Where's the gentleman I'm supposed to meet? Oh my goodness, me. They must know he was talking to someone on the inside. They'll be watching everyone closer now. I knew this was a mistake. Mortimer, if he realizes it was me the investigator was planning to meet, he'll have me killed. Yes, the White Glove Society strictly forbids eating humans, but we weren't always the White Glove Society. Mortimer and some of the others have regressed to the old ways. They've taken many people over the last few months, but always from freeside or secluded places where they wouldn't be missed. It wasn't enough. Lately, they've gone for tourists here on the Strip, even in the hotel. I guess that's the hazard of a cannibal becoming a gourmet. It's hard to please a refined palate. The girl, the one who disappeared. I know what happened to her. Because I distracted her fiancé while they took her. Well, I'm not proud of it, but I had to. They could see I was having second thoughts. Some of the White Gloves began meeting privately a while back, started talking about how we'd lost our identity. I started attending because I thought it was about changing our politics. Then they started talking about returning to the old ways, and there was no way out. They'd kill me for the things I heard them say. He's alive, as far as I know. They're trying to keep him fresh. Mortimer has special plans for him. The White Glove Society has a banquet every night at 7. It's in our private section. Mortimer wants to reintroduce humans into our cuisine. Since eating people is a crime we punish by death, he's going to do it in secret. After everyone has eaten it, he'll tell them. With no real way to punish everyone, in Mortimer's mind anyway, their minds will be open to the idea of eating people as a delicacy. They might, but to him, the legacy of returning to the old ways is worth his own life. I don't think he expects it, though. I don't either. Nothing is more important to the society than being on the cutting edge of New Vegas cuisine. Mortimer's idea will appeal to that need. He just has to get them over the taboo. That may be true, but I wouldn't recommend it. He's built a reputation, and it isn't for calmness and impartiality. He's not what he looks like. They call him Hurricane Heck. The man built his empire by hiring mercenaries to drive off the competition. Lately, he's been attacking our Brahmin suppliers so he can take over their business. He's the sort to pound in a nail with a wrecking ball. If you give him the whole story on this, he'd be liable to raise the entire hotel. And God knows what he'd do to the rest of the strip. I don't know exactly. I wasn't in on it. I think some of them have stopped trusting me. But you can bet they're keeping him near the gourmand. Our chef, Philippe, has an obsession with fresh ingredients. It'd be back in the members only section, so you'll have to be careful. Don't be seen, and more importantly, don't let them see Ted in the open. It's guarded both at the lobby entrance and in the access tunnels leading from the main restaurant. I could sponsor you as an honorary member. The White Gloves are always looking for people who can elevate their status. You'd certainly fit the bill with everything you've done around here. Otherwise, you'll have to find some way to get inside quietly. It won't be easy, and it'll be harder still to get them out. Hmm. Well, they'll all be sampling pre-war wines before the meal. Maybe it's as simple as drugging them. Although, that wouldn't stop any future kidnappings. You'd have to expose Mortimer, but he's going to confess anyway. What if... what if his revelation were a lie? What if no one had eaten human flesh but him? If you could somehow replace Philippe in the kitchen and serve a convincing substitute instead, you could walk Ted right through the middle of that room after Mortimer speaks, and then he'd have some explaining to do. Philippe has been trying to approximate the taste of human flesh for years. He must have a recipe somewhere. Let's plan on meeting again as soon as... Wait, did you hear something? Were you followed?
I'm so relaxed. Too bad I can't stay longer. But who can at these prices? Evening. How may I be of service, sir? Hmm. You'll have to look elsewhere, I'm afraid. The whole idea of joining the White Glove Society is pure hogwash. You're either in it or you're not. There's no joining. This honorary member nonsense is just something Marjorie contrived because she's so preoccupied with image. But it's only a fad. Once it blows over, the riffraff we've temporarily inducted will be shown the door. So I wouldn't hold out hope if I were you. Indeed. I hear we straightened up a band of thugs in Freeside. Welcome to the Ultralux. Why, yes, of course. The White Glove Society is the most exclusive club in all of New Vegas. Perhaps the entire world. It's only natural that you'd need a sponsor from within the club who can vouch for your good name. Originally, we didn't allow anyone else in, you see. Founding members only. We thought exclusivity would make us the envy of everyone who's anyone. And it has. But then I had the idea to allow honorary members. Lower in status, naturally. But it just makes people want to be us even more. And the right people could certainly do wonders for our image. Celebrities, philanthropists. We want only the very best. And you most certainly fit the bill. Given your deeds on the strip alone, I can safely say that you would be a prized addition to our honorary ranks. You have my full support, and you are welcome to join us at our nightly banquets in our special section of the Gourmand. I hope to see you there. Hey. Word has it you were spotted entering the Lucky 38. However did you get on that guest list? Salutations. Sounds like the Kings made nice with the NCR and Freeside. It seems there was room for two flies on the same bit of dung after all.
okay, boss. Why are you standing still? Do you think the world waits for you while you stand there drooling? Get back out there and get to work. Who do... Who the fuck do you think I am? I'm the fucking god of New Vegas Brahmin Fusion Cuisine, that's who. No, no, that doesn't even give me the credit I deserve. I fucking invented edible food. Do you like eating? Good. You owe me your entire goddamn garbage existence. Oh, really? So despite your filthy face and your vacant expression and your complete lack of human dignity, you're telling me you're not a server? What kind of harebrained fucking psychobabble bullshit is that? I yell at people because I like yelling at people and because they fucking deserve it. Not because Mumsy and Daddykins didn't hug me enough. Oh, I see how it is. You think because my father walked out on us when I was five, now I have to yell at people. Or because my mother was a deranged chem fiend who regularly brought strange men home who told me to call them uncle. Or because my sisters would lock me in a shipping crate when they didn't want me around. And my brother... God, I'd forgotten about that. How could they do that to me? I can't stay here. I need to be alone. Forget about the fucking banquet. You know what? You can do it. You be the star chef. Take my recipes. It won't fill the hole, though. Just remember that. You'll always feel empty. Leave me alone. Haven't you done enough? Well, what do you want? I'm very busy here. What, me? The supreme ruler of the Nevada dining scene? 
teach some low-life halfwits how to make food that doesn't smell like burning excrement? Do you think it would sell? You're pushing your luck. Here, I have a few copies on me. This better be good enough. We're gonna have a real problem if this thing isn't a hit. About time. How may I assist? At once. My daddy's gonna kill all you bastards once he finds out what you done to me. My daddy sent you? God damn it. I almost died in here. What the hell took you so long? It's just one damn hotel. Who did this to me anyway? They hit me over the head before I got a look at him. What in the Sam hell? Eat me? What kind of sick bastards would eat a person? I'll tell you what, as soon as I'm out of here, and my daddy knows the story, you can bet there ain't gonna be no white hat society no more. To hell with that. You've seen those freaks. They dress the same, talk the same. You can bet they all eat the same, too. They deserve what my daddy's gonna have coming for them. All right, all right. But there's gonna be some justice one way or another. I'll see to that. Let's go. I'll be right behind you. Come on, move it. So long ago, when we were bound together not as members, but as family, as a clan. And when Mr. House came to us with his proposal, we accepted, knowing we stood to gain much. Little did we know how much we'd lose in the process. As a society, we've endeavored to sample the finest food and drink the world has to offer. But we are living a lie. 
There is a meat sweeter than the most corn-fed livestock. Most of you have tasted it. All of you have coveted it. Among us, it is a crime to discuss a return to the old ways that unified our people. Tonight, that all changes. The taboo ends. Let me finish, Marjorie. You don't know it yet, but you are all now guilty of a greater crime. One that ordinarily bears the harshest of punishments. Surely that you are all guilty warrants not only universal amnesty, but also a renewed discussion. For our society to be truly elite, we must dine on the most delicious, the most exclusive food known to us. And tonight, for the first time as a society, you are sampling that very dish, the meat we are forbidden to taste, the way it was meant to be eaten. What the? Who is this trespasser? What are you? Why is he there? Who are we eating right now? No! These are lies. I never kidnapped anyone. And even if I did, there's no harm done. He's alive, after all. You're all hypocrites. How can you claim to be connoisseurs yet deny yourselves the greatest of all meats? I am ashamed to have once called everyone here family. This isn't over, though. I'll begin anew. The White Glove Society will never achieve the greatness of my new order. You'll all hear from me again. What do you need? Come on, move it. Salutations. Oh, oh my. How unfortunate. And in front of all these people, too. He always was a bit of a pill, Mortimer. He was so pouty when I decided to ban eating people. And now this. I should have paid more attention to the warning signs. Can you imagine what people would have said? Why, it would have been a complete scandal if it weren't for you. Ta-ta! Being an honorary member isn't the same as being a real member, but it still makes you better than everyone else. Right behind. I've heard that elite units are on the way to support our armies here. God, Ted, are you all right? Quit your hollering. I'm fine. I've heard the legions. Howdy. Good seeing you again. Kid, look around you. There's poison and death everywhere. And people like Heck are responsible for the misery we suffer. What right do they have to continue with their mischief and killing, huh? Hell, a good thrashing is what I want to give them. But I see your point, kid. Things will never change without us good folks. All right. I'm gonna get Ethel far away from this damn city and head back home. There's a worthy life waiting for us there. Thanks for your help, kid. So long. Planning to unleash their best no men against us. Out, Sorry, but I don't have time to talk right now. 
I'm going back to the ranch. Later. I'm out of this. Pity for good. Beg your pardon, but... My deepest apologies for the sli... But we simply can't have any... You got me my boy back. I got no words. Now, I hope you didn't do no harm to whoever's responsible for this. I want to skin their hides myself. Well, that does it. None of them maniacs will ever do business with Hag Gunderson long as they live. Hell, I'll put me together a damn blockade. Hit them where it hurts. They control the food? Well, there ain't gonna be no food. Not for anybody in this whole damn town. It's a goddamn monument to inhumanity. Let them starve. Biggest favor anyone's ever done this hellhole. I don't like this place. Whole strip, really. Ever since I got here, the stink of it has flooded my nostrils. But you got a point. They're already hell-bent on depravity here. All I'd be doing is helping them along. All right. Well, I promised you I'd make it worth your while. So here you are. Try not to lose it all at the same casino. You done right. You done right by me. You know, if you knew what you I were doing, it. I could have been out of there hours ago. You watch yourself around, Mr. Gunderson.